Life Audio. Faith Over Fear is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith affirming podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hello, and welcome to the Faith Over Fear podcast, where we attack our most pervasive fears with truth, because life is too short for any of us to live enslaved. We are passionate about helping God's children live in freedom. We would love to chat with you online or on social media. Visit our show notes to learn how to connect with us. I'm Jennifer Slattery. And I'm Ava Pennington. And what happens when you sense God calling you to something, maybe even something really hard, only to have everything appear to fall apart after you obey. Can we still trust God to be good? And years ago, we felt my family, actually my husband largely felt God calling us out of Southern California. And that was a hard move to make because we weren't 100% sure that he had a job awaiting him. We thought probably, and so we left our housing keys with our realtor and we packed everything we could fit in our van and we headed out to Louisiana. He actually gave, he quit his job on the drive and assuming that there was going to be this job in Louisiana when we got there. And there was, and shortly after there was just this big housing market crash in Southern California. And so God had let us out before then so that we didn't lose a chunk of money. Well, then we get to Louisiana and we're thinking that this is going to be kind of our fresh start. My husband had been under a lot of stress with the company that he was working for and just the hours were crazy and, and traffic was crazy. And so we all thought that this was going to be this, just a fresh start for us and and kind of this great, great new opportunity. And we got there life was really, really hard for a while. And this actually began a three-year transition or period where we went through a period of unemployment. We again, packed everything up in our van. We loaded everything else in two storage lockers and we moved to Texas and we were there for a couple of months. My husband took a contract job and we lived in a 500 square foot rent by the month apartment. And We knew, like we were having a sense that God was going to call my husband back to his original company, but we didn't know for sure. We didn't know how long his contract job would last. And we didn't know even if he went back to this company where that would be. And so I remember at the time, every morning I would say, okay, God, what do you have for me today? And that was a new shift for me. And I was put in this place where I was pretty much anchorless other than Christ. Like I I didn't really have roots. And so it, it put me in this place where I was just ready to pick up and go. Now I did have fear at the time and I kind of went back and forth between faith and fear, but because I kept that mentality, it helped me to remain pliable during that season when even in the hard circumstances, God actually was doing a beautiful work and he was setting our family up for increased intimacy with him, increased trust in him and really to reveal him wherever we went. And I think we were showing my daughter, this was the biggest, the biggest part for me. It was hard as a mom to watch my daughter with all of this upheaval and the loss of friendships and, and the grieving that came with that. But I believe because we just sought Christ, not that it was easy, but because we sought Christ as a family, my husband and I really made a point to kind of pull together and and rely on God and read devotions and, and talk with our daughter about where God was in this whole journey. I believe we showed her a faith that stands you know, moving from like a Sunday morning faith to a faith that, that stands, it says, okay, we, we really believe that Jesus is our Lord and savior. And we believe enough. We trust him enough that we are going to follow his leading wherever he leads. Even if we don't know where that's going to be. And even if sometimes along the way, it's hard and painful. Yeah. Smooth sailing isn't always guaranteed when we follow God. And uh, Mary and Joseph certainly uh, experienced that. I mean, here they they have the, the wonderful, amazing circumstances surrounding the birth of their son, Jesus, and all these incredible visits, whether it's shepherds or wise men. And yet, even as they're obeying God, 
danger is coming at them. And so we read in Matthew chapter two that an angel appears to Joseph and, and tells him, danger's coming. You've got to leave Israel and go to Egypt because Herod's trying to kill the child. And so what does Joseph do? He, he has this dream and he immediate, immediately obeyed and takes his family to Egypt and they stay there until Herod dies. And in the meantime, while they're leaving town, Herod realizes the Magi left town without coming back and letting him know where the child is. And so he gives orders to kill all the young boys two years and under in Bethlehem, thinking that by doing so, he would get rid of the baby Jesus. And so not only was there danger for Mary and Joseph and Jesus, but now there's danger for others because they obeyed and others suffered because of their obedience. I'm going to continue reading, actually, starting in verse 19 of Matthew chapter 2, and I'll, I'll read all the way to verse 23. Scripture says, After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that, and I'm going to mispronounce this name, sorry, Achilles was reigning in Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called the Nazarene. And that's speaking of Jesus. You know, you mentioned before how he responded immediately. And here we see him responding immediately again. And I'm really struck with Joseph was responsive. Actually, if you read it from the beginning of when we're first introduced to him, Joseph was responsive to God's leading before the danger hit. So when he learned that Mary was pregnant and an angel came to him and said, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, he obeyed. And then when he said, Hey, when, when the authority said, Hey, you have to go to Bethlehem, he traveled with a pregnant woman, which wouldn't have been easy. And then when he is called in the middle of the night to leave probably where he's established roots and at least got some, some measure of, of comfort, maybe established a new job, you know, some way supporting himself. And then God's like, well, you got to leave again. And then when he's in Egypt, it's okay, now it's time to go back. And I just think of if we want to be in our, in our last episode, we talked about building intimacy with Christ and how, as we increase our intimacy with Christ, our ability to hear him grows. And I think our faith grows. And I think we can see this in Joseph so that When it was a time of crisis, he understood God's voice. He had a habit of obedience and he responded immediately. And he, or at least from what we read in scripture, he didn't give into his fears that danger and trouble is only a result of disobedience. It can happen through obedience as well. And then, of course, the related lie that, well, when danger does happen, God's not powerful enough to protect me. And so Joseph obeyed, knowing that God had protected them thus far. And obedience would mean that he he would continue to protect them, even in spite of the plots and schemes and plans of others. Right. And I think in this story, we really see just God's, just his protection, his sovereignty, his love for us. He knew danger was coming. He had a plan in place before the threat hit. And he showed Joseph exactly when he needed to get out. And also he showed him exactly when the danger had passed. So he guided Joseph at each step. That just provides peace to me, knowing that God already knows everything I'm going to face. And and Jesus said, yes, you will have trouble. So he didn't promise us, like you said, an easy life, but we can still walk forward in faith. We can still, as scripture calls it, sleep in peace. We don't have to remain awake and alert, figuring everything out because we can trust that our God is watching over us and protecting us. Okay. So despite the dangers around us, if we have that intimacy with the Lord, if we're, if we're trusting him and walking with him and obeying him, Regardless of the dangers, the safest place to be is in the palm of his hand. Now, that does not mean that physical danger won't 
trust us, what it means is that as long as we are obeying him, we are fulfilling his purposes for us and nothing will come between us and our eternal relationship with him. Now, danger may touch us, but it will never separate us from him. And it will never separate us from our um, eternal relationship with him. And really, when it comes down to it, you know, I think sometimes we attach so much importance to the temporary that we forget about the eternal. And God is always, yes, he's concerned about the temporary things that affect us, but his priority is always the eternal. Absolutely. And I think in in this story, we also see that God's plans cannot be disrupted. He is sovereign over his plans. And I love there's a passage in Psalm 139 where David wrote, he said, David, ancient Israel, second king. And he, he said that all the days of his life were written in God's book before a single one came to be. And I think there's comfort in knowing that God does have a plan for us. It is a hope-filled plan. He has the power to fulfill his plan and he's always leading us towards his will for us. And the other thing I find significant in the story, I find kind of, I don't know, it, it just makes me smile is God made sure that Mary and Joseph had provisions before they left for Egypt. Because if you read back prior to their fleeing, the the Magi came and they brought some pretty costly gifts. And I can just imagine, I mean, I don't think they may have, but I don't think Mary and Joseph stored the frankincense, myrrh and and gold as like a memento for as they traveled. They probably sold the contents and used that as provisions for their journey and maybe to get reestablished in Egypt. Yeah, God's protection doesn't mean that he will always protect us from any danger that will happen at all. He'll just protect us from dangers that will disrupt his plans and purposes for us. And if he has plans and purposes for us, he's going to provide. He's going to make those provisions, maybe not in the way we expect or, you know, coming from sources we we expect. But he did it for Mary and Joseph, didn't he? He gave them the provision, certainly not what they expected, but it was enough for them to follow his plan for their life. And that meant in the temporary to leave for Egypt and to be able to live there until they could return. In my story that I shared at the beginning of this episode, so I said we we left Southern California before the housing market hit. So we left with a with some provision that we then moved to Louisiana with. And that provision, it provided funds from, for our daughter's college. And also when we went through a period, so when we were in Louisiana, we lost a lot of money on our house because we ended up having to sell really quickly. And my husband lost his company car and he lost his company phone. And yet, and it was a little hard. Sometimes you get this, this provision from God before the danger hits is what, what kind of happened with us. And you get, you get attached to that provision, not recognizing God was giving that to you for what he had ahead. And so I kind of grieved and like, okay, we lost this chunk of change instead of thinking like God had provided us for that and praising that, okay, God, you provided us for this, this hard period. And, but it does also give us assurance that when we do experience those, those hard things, we can trust God to be our provider. Yes, I, I, this passage really reminds me of two of uh, God's character uh, traits, and that is, one is his omniscience, that he knows everything, that nothing is a surprise to him, and it may be a surprise to me, but not to him. And then his other attribute is that of protector, that he will protect us as he leads. And again, that doesn't mean danger isn't going to touch us but it means that he will protect us to fulfill all that he had planned for us. That's beautiful. And those are just powerful truths we can hold tight to. They're unchanging truths, promises in scripture of who God is. And the more we know who God is, the the greater our faith and the more we come to trust him and grow closer to him. Well, thank you for listening. I hope today's episode encouraged you to follow as God leads, to trust when you go through a hard circumstance, to trust that that doesn't mean that God's upset. It doesn't mean you, it doesn't necessarily mean you messed up. It it could just be that we live in a hard world, but God will be with you in those circumstances. I would encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to subscribe to this podcast, then you won't miss a single episode. Share it with your friends so that they can be encouraged this holiday season. 
We would love it if you would rate it. That encourages our team, but it also helps others to find our podcast. Until next time, may you live as one who truly has been set free. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to Faith Over Fear, a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. To learn more about Jennifer Slattery or to check out any of the resources she mentioned in this episode, just head over to her website, jenniferslatterylivesoutloud.com, or check out our show notes. This episode was produced by Kelly Givens and edited by Stephen Sanders. A special thanks to our executive producer, Stephen McGarvey. For more Faith Toolkit podcasts like this, just head over to lifeaudio.com.